Um, thanks for the introduction. Um, so deep brain stimulation and radio frequency lesioning has been used as the treatment procedure for Parkinson's disease for years. Um, compared to them, Fox ultrasound has a few advantages. It is highly non-invasive, uh, it doesn't involve any radiation, and it has immediate effect right after the sonication. And the current FUS device can provide a good accuracy on the target, which is uh, the globus pallidus for Parkinson's disease. And the device we are using is the InsideTech neural system working at 670 kilohertz, and each sonication takes 10 to 16 seconds and will be repeated by 10 to 30 times with a maximum power of uh, 1200 watts. And because different patient has different scalp property or SDR, uh, the peak temperature on the target is usually between 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. So why we need to predict the lesion size? Because the lesion cannot be observed during the treatment due to the low image contracts because of the existence of the water bath. And also the lesion usually take 24 to 48 hours to evolve. And why it's important to predict the lesion size? Because the lesion size may be related with the treatment outcome, just as what has been found in the treatment of incisal tremor. And also we want to avoid the damage to the surrounding uh, health tissue, especially the internal capsule and the optical tract. So compared to the treatment of incisal tremor, uh, the target of Parkinson's disease is further away from the ACPC plan, which is at the center of the brain. So the, uh, lesion, the, the shape of the lesion will be elongated. Uh, in the treatment of incisal tremor, it has been found that the 51 degrees Celsius the sh uh, thermal stretch holding area could be a, from the MR thermometry could be a good indicator to predict the lesion size. So we are trying to find a similar model for Parkinson's disease. However, the focal spot is no longer a, a round spot, it's more like an ellipse. So we come up with a temperature model, which is also based on the MR thermometry as an ellipse, which has uh, two vectors, which includes two vectors, representing the long axis and the short axis. And from each patient, we will select five, uh, five sonications, which generated the highest temperature rise. And we'll compare the average value with the thermal lesion from the one day post T2 weighted MRI. And we will use um, the function so in the bottom to calculate the difference and, and compare and to evaluate our temperature model. So also because the focal location will be changed during the treatment, usually within one or two millimeter. So we modify our temperature model by taking into consideration of these movements in all three directions, uh, which are RL and AP and SI. So here shows the results of the difference between the thermal lesion size and the, our temperature model with four different temperature thresholds. Uh, based on 13 um, PD patients. And uh, we found that although the 48 degree model um, can, is not the best prediction for all the patients, but overall it shows the least uh, difference and the variation. So we will look into this 48 degree model to see if this is a, it is a, bad pre, it is a good or bad uh, prediction. So we did some statistical analysis um, on the correlation between the lesion size and this 48 degree model. And we found a good correlation on both the long axis and the short axis. And uh, in each figure, we include all the sonication, which means uh, five sonication from each patient. And uh, we found most of the sonication are within this 95% uh, confidential interval. And if we take, we take the average of uh, uh, every five sonication from a patient, it will be definitely within this confidential interval. So we believe this 48 degree model is a good indicator to predict the lesion size for Parkinson's disease. Uh, furthermore, we look at the, the lesion size after a month. However, it doesn't uh, correlate with any of our temperature model, which is because the lesion size after one month are quite different uh, between different patients. So uh, in summary, I will find a good correlation between the one day lesion size and our temperature model with the 48 degree temperature threshold of our Parkinson's patient and compared that with the 51 degree model for incisal tremor. And uh, we also found the reduction in lesion size from one day to one month uh, based on the T2 weighted MRI was not predictable, which is similar as what we found uh, from the ET patient. 
And uh, in the future, we will include more uh, PD patient to improve our temperature model. Um, I would like to thank our uh, research and the clinical team and also the funding resource uh, that support this uh, study. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Go. And this presentation is open for questions. Um, as we demonstrated in, in, in the presentation at the beginning, uh, we had the difficulties of making a thermal region, the bigger region, yes. like our experience with the radio frequency pilidotomy. Mm -hmm. uh, you just mentioned about you know, the, uh, the difficulty of temperature rise. Could you, could you tell us you know, the, the real size of the region you measured in the GG axis? So just to show the actual images, could you tell us the, the length of the, the lesion? Okay. So do you mean the lesion from the T2 weighted imaging? Yeah, right. Anyway, the, uh, you just make one region or you just add another region to make a bigger region. For example, when you make a RF lesioning, we are adding another region to uh, increase yes. the size. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't see any the additional images. So could you tell us? Uh, so the, be, you just make one lesion? No, we did a couple of sonications, so it's kind of accumulated thermal lesion. No, in one side. Uh, yeah, only on one side. Uh, so I think the, the, the we, we just mentioned about in our presentation, mm -hmm. if we make one single lesion, mm -hmm. and uh, if we want to add another lesion, we have some difficulty of the... Oh, yes, that's right. So yeah. that's why we take into consideration of five sonication to find the average value. So we divide into two groups, and we found that the mm -hmm. outcome of the one single lesion was worse than the, the bigger lesion in the GPI. So I think, in the, and also you mentioned that the temperature 48, mm -hmm. I don't believe the 48 can really make the permanent lesion in the long-term base. In the, did you check MR image six months or the one year after the treatment? So the, the 48 uh, temperature mm -hmm. model doesn't mean the peak temperature is 48. It's, it's just showing, showing us the area of the uh, thermal lesion. So the peak temperature is, is about 48. It could be like 60. The 48 okay. degree mm -hmm. temperature model, it just show, tell you the area. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Goh.